All the music albums mentioned in this video are actually so good, like for real. They form this amazing, super high quality playlist, which I like a lot. Spring of 2017 gave us quite a hard time because we've ended up with so many releases to talk about in this video that we still had to cut the list and in the end, now, in another edition of Missed Reviews, I'll be talking about some LPs and EPs that got our attention the most from this past spring that for some reason we haven't had a chance to review in full. Starting off with an amazing album, World Eater by Blank Mass, known as well as Fuck Bottoms, Benjamin John Power. God bless, this is such an incredible electronic music release. So far, one of my favorite electronic releases from this year. Black Mass' previous works showed just how visceral his industrial style could be. It's dark, it's gloomy, it's quite danceable. In World Eater, he might get a little bit away from the dance floor fillers, but he acknowledges the vocal samples more. He works incredibly passing huge sound and scales of noisy synth lines to minimal ground, field recordings and simpler beats. All the tracks in this release have a special something to offer. The mood of the record is very versatile. I like how light and heavy it can feel at different times of the album. We salute Benjamin for doing such an incredible job on his uh, third full-length studio album. Recently he performed on that Sacred Bones anniversary um, showcase thing along with Jim Jarmusch and Genesis P. Orich. I almost died here in that announcement watching videos on Instagram afterwards. Sacred Bones do continue to come through with those amazing things, amazing collabs, amazing releases. What a label, love that label. Next have to talk about Idols and their debut record, amazing debut record. Brutalism, they are truly fantastic, one of the most important uh, new bands out there on the scene. Album starts with Panic and No Surrender shout and an immersive, overwhelming brutality, both instrumentally and in that expressive, authentic manner of frontman Joe's vocal delivery. As the title was suggested, it is indeed a very brutal and vicious record to begin with and I'm all in as well as all the other uh, people who quickly became fans of the band. Besides making an incredibly loud, dirty, noisy album, it's also a smart one, uh, interesting, contextly. Sometimes funny, sometimes clever, sometimes all the above at the same time. They discuss politics, sexual abuse, religion, social norms, but also things like forgetting their girlfriend's birthday for the second year while either being drunk or on coke or something else. I miss this kind of sound out of the UK. At least we don't really get a chance to hear that much of it somewhere on the available platforms. So it's so nice to finally have someone like Idols with their dirty world players and guitar riffs. If you're looking for something less brutal, more electronic filled, quiet, thoughtful, then look up Kelly Lee Owens and her debut self-titled album. That is such a beautiful piece of music. And my another spring musical obsession, Kelly Lee Owens appeared out of nowhere quite recently and I became a fan instantly. She's one of those producers who makes everything I like about minimal music. In her debut there are this magnetic dream pop moment layered beneath ambient drone, minimal techno, even crowd rock. Her music both feels quite magical and realistic as if you could touch all the well-produced melodies and synthetic eruptions. Though her vocals could flow somewhere behind hushed putting you under her spell, making you dissolve into the beautiful, emotional, fluid world of her record. It's pure pleasure. Australian psychedelic enthusiasts Pond came back. They have the new album called The Weather, produced by one and only Kevin Parker, the creative production genius. The production on the album is actually really, really good. The psychedelic, refined and defined. This album is perhaps my favorite Pond release so far. It, it is as chaotic, as daring as Pond can let themselves be right now. The weather seamlessly flows from one explosive track to another. Even when boys and co decide to calm things down, it doesn't really become to sound boring or filler. I like how happy and grand this record sounds, but 
at the same time, it doesn't feel like it takes itself too seriously. And it has this very pleasant swagger groove about it. I love it. Must listen for the psych rock lovers. Danish music scene grows stronger every day, every year. There's just so many talented people in that not big of a country. The young, dreamy, romantic synth pop duo First Hate, in the beginning of May, released, self released, I believe, their full length debut album called Amazing Title A Prayer for the Unemployed Lover. A lot of Danish bands seemed to dig deeper into the realm of their surroundings, in a state of being, and it comes out quite grim and dark. It's what Danish music scene is famous for. In case of First Hate, it's the moody tone of some of their lyrics and the way they deliver it vocally, but still their debut album is perhaps the most friendly and the most gentle you could find in the national discography right now. Sometimes the production on this album could lack some experiment, some risk some creativity. It could start sounding a bit overproduced at times, with some scenes just being a little bit too flashy or too cheesy for a uh, synth pop ballad of 2017. But this record also provides such huge vision on First Hate's positive, alternative, experimental pop hits making future that for me definitely makes to the list of the most interesting debuts out there we are all waiting for the next step the uk-based electronic producer matthew Barnes under the moniker forest source released yet another favorite electronic album of mine called compassion set in the uncertain aggressive new world we are experiencing it's a little bit hard to see all the political and social mindsets Barnes had in his head while making this album, but I can imagine some of the most tragic visionary from our life, from our everyday life, from the news, get accompanied by the triumph and sometimes quite funeralesque, beautiful tracks um, on this album. But I feel like Forrest Sword's music and Matthew Bond's work always has been about the same kind of vibe. It's just maybe that the everyday life, our days, our life became darker that's why it fits so well with music like this with the sound like this so tragic grim and beautiful at the same time nevertheless compassion goes much beyond than just that it has this almost primal subtones and wild energy i also love how mighty does make his music sound incredibly cinematic shout out to his work on soundtracking ubisoft's Assassin's Creed. Also important to notice that this album shows new sides and endless new little elements with further listens. And for sure, this is very interesting release to explore more, to listen more carefully, more thoughtfully. I love this. First case, another young Danish ones in our list. We were waiting for this Loki Rubik soul release since the day it was announced, and the guy did not disappoint. Uh, City of Women presents Copenhagen-based music artist and um, industry commercial enthusiast Porsche Isolation co-creator, co-owner, in a very discovered through the years and through all the different music projects and very known field of ambient pop. Yet making this modern experimental pop music collide with favorite industrial and noise still could sound not that new by my description but when i'm listening to it every time it feels very fresh it feels like a fresh sound and it's not so heavily experimental it's quite listener friendly it's a pleasing easygoing experimental record which i do appreciate endlessly i guess since lucky put it out under his own name for the very first time it is the most him so whoever got the good learning and all the music projects he has ever done before this might be an interesting surprise and listening for you next of course got to talk about the sudden release of new death grips mix kind of an ep release steroids crouching tiger hidden gabba which totally got me 
hyper excited about this new album they are working on, apparently. I can't say that I'm completely impressed with everything that's going on in this mix, but I also can say that I am bored or consider that fillerish, sounding fillerish. As for example, some of the other Death Grips EPs from before. On steroids, there are a couple of my new favorite Death Grips tracks. Overall, it seems like they're getting back to the more messed up lo-fi production technique, which only complements whatever they do now. This one mix sounds more daring than some tracks on a very much clean produced bottomless bit, which I like, but still. Yeah, th this new mix, y'all, is crazy. It's absolutely, it's, it's fantastic, it's great, but it's crazy. And it's, you know, it's Death Grips all we wanted from them. <laughs> it's not the list of our favorite music if it doesn't include any post-punk, so. This new EP called Call of the Wild by a band, uh, Viagra Boys, really got me in. I like when the new bands experiment with the older sound and modernize it for the little simple details. In punk and post-punk, it might be a little bit hard to surprise now. Perhaps only a chivalrous fruit of vivid, crazy, angst and wild energy or by instrumental and or mixing virtue or both you know it's always good when you have both and when it comes to bands like humiliated or this band viagra boys in their ep call of the wild it is very much the case i'd recommend you to keep an eye on those guys experiments are what makes the music of the future exist in the now finally officially signed now a pc music label uh artist main member felicita this spring released his new ep esse homo eke homo ethe homo something like that felicita is definitely on the more mysterious and more uh surprising sides of pc music label for me it's always quite hard to expect something from him and from his production. And this EP wasn't an exception, it got me by surprise. It's incredibly mellow sounding and kind of heartbreaking at the same time. It's a beautiful keyboard lab music, seamlessly transitioning between the tracks. It's very calm and in pictures, beautifully the release. This video can't last forever, unfortunately, but I also will feel terrible if I don't mention some of the other releases we've liked and we've listen to through this spring. Talking about not bad comeback albums, I was really impressed with Tai Chi's Crawl Space, full of pop bangers and intimate interludes, great release. Future Islands with a Fuff Field, it has some of the danceable, incredible tracks which definitely gonna be uh, with me till the end of this year for sure. Magical Little Dragon who on their new season high decided to look back to get back a little bit to see the influences. Um, it is a very beautiful record actually. As well as Sylvan Esso, Esso, still not sure how it's pronounced correctly. <clears throat> what now? Um, not that electronic pop release. Amazing powerful female-led album brought to you by Feist with pleasure and Yasmin Hamdan on Al Hamilat, something like that. It is incredible record, but both incredible records. More or less rock sounding albums which we've liked are by Black Lips, Satan's Graffiti or God's Art, love the title, The Black Angel with Death Song, record everybody kept talking about. Um, a longer dissipated comeback and a very problematic one. A self titled record by Slow Dive. I thought it was decent, it wasn't bad, it wasn't that bad, it wasn't that incredible, it was decent. Alex G with Rocket just came out, very diverse and inconsistent record, but there are a couple of tracks that I am absolutely obsessed with. Waves came back with You're Welcome, can't say that I'm super obsessed with it, but the Afghan Weeks as well with In Spades great record. I was quite surprised with this one. The Homesick came back with Youth Hunt, which I thought was pretty good. Also, As Gear came back with Afterglow. Very mellow, transcendent record. EPs to catch out for are definitely Danny L. Hall. I can't say that I'm that impressed by it, but I need to listen to it more. There's this one track, I guess it's with Carly Rae Jepsen. It's it's very good. This one is like very good. Creation of more since we've already talked about Lucky Rabbit in this video. Uh, also, got in a P. Finding people. It sounds pretty interesting. Liked this one quite a bit. Animal Collective came back with Meeting of the Waters EP. 
Um, can't say again that I'm that impressed, but this one track that I really like, it sounds incredible. It's very good. Oh, her mystiques or Luke Abbott released his EP called uh, Truth. Sounds great, love that EP. Some Lux are finally coming back. They put out an EP called Remedy. Um, love the cover of this EP. And it sounds it sounds good. Nick Murphy, is, we all hoped he's in his debut record, but now he released an EP called Missing Link. Has some impressive production on it, including Kate Tonada. Our favorite hip hop duo Sweatshop Boys got a new EP. And finally, the producer Romans with an EP Automatic. Quite an interesting electronic listen. Now, debut albums. A lot of great debut albums besides those ones that I've already talked about. I want to start by mentioning the incredible Serve Delisa and Ison. Ison. I thought that it's hard to impress me with the alternative R&B style, but actually, uh, I think by including all the classic instrumentals, which I'm obsessed with, and her voice, she has this incredible voice, which I like. Um, yeah, this album, this album is actually really good. It's a good alternative R&B album. Sir was got a debut, Dig in the Tunnel, got some hate, got some love. I personally think this record was fine. It was good. A lot of great tracks on this record. Will Joseph Cook finally released his debut album as well as Girl Pool. Mysterious and Magical Puma Rosa, love that band. The Amazons, not bad, not bad indie rock, consistent indie rock. Died Sig, The Big Moon, She Devils. I was personally really surprised with the Blood Sun Circle record, Distorted Forms. I don't even know who those guys are, but they sound great. I love this record. Also, The Magic Gang released their EP, under Yala Records. Ella Dawn of Sadness by Alexander Sadie is not only a great title for an album, but um, a quite decent alternative pop release. And also recommend you to check out American Teen by a rising pop star Khalid uh, from USA. It's not bad. It's a good pop record. Finalizing the cool list with some experimental releases important to know and to listen to. Show Me The Body released a new mixtape called Corpus One. I really like this one but I also do see and do understand why some people don't really like the low fineness of it and its inconsistency but I think it's good. It's good mixtape love this one. Jameson came back with whatever makes you happy. I love the swagger attitude of this record. The instrumental approach was incredible I think. Some of the lyrical writing so good. I love this record. Pharmacon released Contact. It's not the strongest comeback but I like the themes she explored on this album and the cover of this album. Oh my god. And yeah it's a very good noise music. Finally Huxley Ann has an album called Ilium I really enjoyed and Drew McDowell just dropped his A Natural Channel album. I still need a little bit more time to get myself into it because I hadn't really had a chance to sit and to listen to it that well. But so far from what I've heard, I'm really intrigued and it sounded really good. And ending this video on the negative note with albums that got us a little bit disappointed. That I Love You, unfortunately. Bodyguard, it's not bad. The opening track is everything. It's a banger. I love the opening track. But everything else is just like so... I don't know. I don't even remember anything from that record besides that opener track. Circa Waves comeback album is a mess. Didn't like that one. Cameron Avery debut record. Solo debut record. Um, was expecting much more from it than we've got in the end. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just okay. Also all the big comebacks. Wire album was meh. Blondie album was meh. The Sheens was a bit, mm, I, I, I didn't really understand why everybody got hyped about it. San Francisco's comeback, Spoon with Hot Sots. It's not bad, but it's also not really that exciting. Granddaddy, didn't really dig that record. Jesus and Mary Chain, unfortunately, it's not terrible, but it also, none of the tracks really stood out to me on this one. Anani, Paradise EP as well. Um, there are a couple of tracks which I do like, and I do like the production, the electronic production of it, but it's still, it, it seems just very unnecessary, this release. I don't really understand the point of it. Um, it doesn't, again, stand out to me that much to make it um, a whole another EP, you know? And finally, Paramore. Just why? Why everyone are so obsessed over it? It's not terrible. It's a 
okay pop record. But we didn't really understand the whole obsession thing about this release. Mm, Hard Times is a banger. It's actually a really good banger. But everything else on this record is just so whiny. I don't know. And yeah, that's our video. That's all the albums that I wanted to talk about. Actually, I have about 300s more, but this video is not about it. In the comments down below, let us know what's your favorite album and what's your favorite EP from this past three months from this spring. Also let us know your thoughts about the albums that I've mentioned in this video. Maybe you've got something interesting, something new that you didn't hear came out that you wanted to listen now. Or maybe you hated some of the records that I've mentioned. Let us know why. In the end of this thing, quick, quick, quick update. In about five or six hours, I'm actually flying out to Barcelona for Primavera Sound 2017. Yay! Gonna see a lot of bands from this list as well. Pretty excited. I'm seeing Death Grips on 1st of June. I'm extra excited to see that one. I'm, I'm dying. Also, Frank Ocean canceled his gig. Fuck my life. But you know, you know, you know, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. He replaced it with Jamie Sachs. It's not, it's not bad, it's not bad. As long as Jamie Sachs will uh, blast out some Joy Division like he did on Melt. It's all down for that. Anyway, I'm gonna be in Barcelona. I'm gonna be at Primavera Sound 2017. So if you will be there, or if you wanna know something, if you're interested to. Uh, I don't know, if you want me to go to some of the gig to see what's there, you know, let me know. Uh, follow us on social media, follow us on Twitter, hit us up on Twitter. Where are we gonna post some links on some of the broadcasting, because they will broadcast Primavera uh, via Red Bull TV. Watch that one. You might see me somewhere, <laughs> probably not. And I also will try to post some stuff some photos and videos maybe on on our twitter account as mean only yeah the stage and on my personal account uh on twitter i see you in a week i guess in june already in the summer 2017 hope you're having a great night a great day great morning um and listening to all the experimental music in the world love you lots stay cool stay positive peace off